Okay. So we are talking about chapters four through seven of Catcher in the Rye today. And I'm going to do my best to give you both page numbers for the book and also for the PDF that we're using. So chapter four starts on page 26 in the textbook and page 15 on your PDF. Um, now, one of the things Holden dislikes most is when people judge each other without getting to know them. Now, Holden does this all the time, right? But he doesn't like it when people do it to him. Uh, now, on page 27 and page 15 here, it talks about Stradler, right? Now, what Holden is doing here is exactly what he does not like when people do to him, right? So he talks about, and he said, uh, well, so was Stradletter, but in a different way. Stradletter was more of a secret slob. He always looked all right, Stradletter, for instance, but you should have seen the razor he shaved with. It was always rusty as hell and full of leather and hairs and crap. He never cleaned it or anything. It always looked good when he was finished fixing himself up, but he was a secret slob anyway, if you knew him the way I did. Now, with this, he's like, yeah, he's, he's good looking. He's a handsome dude. And I think in some small part, he's jealous of Stradletter, who is much more popular than he is. Um, but he said, you know, he's, it seems like he's good looking, but really he's kind of nasty and gross when you get down to it. And most people don't know that about him, but, and so in some ways, this is kind of one of Holden's attempts to make himself feel better about this situation. Now, as this is going on, Stradletter is getting ready to go out on a date and Holden, uh, and Holden is, uh, kind of hanging around and, um, so Stradletter's shaving and getting ready to go out on his date and Holden's kind of, he's tap dancing around and he's being, acting kind of goofy like a kid. And Stradletter asks him a favor and if, that he would do, write a composition for him. And up here, so this is on page 16 on the PDF and page 28 in your text. And he said, um, anything, anything descriptive, room or house or something you once lived in or something, you know, just as long as it's descriptive as hell. He gave a big yawn when he said that, which is something that always gives me a royal pain. I mean, if somebody yawns right when you're asking them to do you a favor, just don't do it too good, as I always said. Hartzell thinks you're some hotshot in English, and he knows you're my roommate. So, I mean, don't stick all the commas in the right place. Now, in the same way that, you know, Holden, when he was talking about Stradletter, kind of undercut or made himself feel better by talking about Stradletter being a secret slob, Stradletter's not giving Holden any credit on this, right? So he said, you know, my the teacher knows you're my roommate and knows you're good at English, so just don't write it too well, right? Just don't put all the commas in the right place. Putting all the commas in the right place is part of being a good writer and good doing good writing, but it's not all there is to it, right? Now, by saying that, Stradletter's kind of dismissing Holden's talent, and being a good writer is hard work. Most people are not very good at writing, honestly, and... For someone who works really hard at it, like Holden has appeared to, to have someone say, yeah, just don't, don't write it really, don't, don't, don't be very good at this and just, you know, move the commas around a little bit, really is dismissive of what he's talking about, right? Now, a lot of this book um, is about Holden kind of in, in this in-between place. Uh, he's not really an adult and he's not really a kid. And I think most of you are kind of in that same situation too. So continuing on 16 we, and on page 29 in the, the white book, uh, we get a couple examples of Holden acting in a very immature way. Um, uh, just above that on page 29, um, we talked about Ackley on the basketball team. Right. So in the same way that Stradletter kind of dismissed Holden's writing ability by saying, just don't put the commas in the right place. Ackley did the same, th same thing, too, with this basketball player. Uh, so it said right here, page 16 and then 29 in the text, it said, um, we had a terrific guy on the team, Howie Coyle, that could sink them from the middle of the floor without even touching the backboard or anything. Ackley kept saying the whole game the Coyle had a perfect build for basketball. God, how I hate that stuff. Because what he's saying is some people who are tall are good at basketball and being tall probably makes it easier to play basketball but just because you're tall doesn't mean you're a good basketball player right so what he's saying is the only reason that guy's good at basketball is because he happened to be born that way but that discounts all the hard work and effort and practice and, and all the stuff that goes into being a good play basketball player now these kind of superficial judgments that characters are making about each other like Stradletter does with with Holden and his writing ability and Ackley does with the basketball player uh, and even Holden does with Stradletter being secret slob are things that Holden says he does not like, right? When people judge each other based on kind of more superficial things. And, and I, I think what he wants are people to get to know him. 
And, and I don't know if you feel like that ever, but I, I remember feeling like that when I was in high school, right? Like it's pretty quiet. And I just kind of thought to myself, if people got to know me, they would really, they'd like me, right? And it wasn't that I was disliked, it was picked on or anything, but I wasn't the most outgoing person. So I kind of get that. It's going on a little bit. Uh, so then they start talking about the date that Stradletter is going to go on. And right here, so this is page 17 in, in the PDF and uh, 31 in the, in the white text. Jane Gallagher, right? Jane Gallagher, I said. I even got up from the washbowl when I said that. I damn near dropped dead. You're damn right I know her. She practically lived right next door to me the summer before last. She had this big Doberman pincher, and that's how I met her, and her dog used to keep coming over. And Now, Stradlater's not interested in this. This is a girl that Holden has pretty strong feelings for, and he had some type of relationship with... Uh, she really means a lot to him. Now, in this book, as Holden is kind of in this in-between area, not quite adult, not quite kid, um, he thinks about sex a lot, right? And really worries about it a lot. And he feels like he should be more sexually active than he is. But I, as we start to learn more about his relationship with Jane, what we see is that he's not really ready for that, right? And I think he feels kind of embarrassed about that and feels like he should be acting more adult or whatever. But that's not the relationship he's looking for, right? And at the bottom of this page, we get an example right here about checkers right he and uh jane used to play checkers a lot um and i used to play checkers with her all the time I used to play what with her all the time checkers checkers for christ's sake yeah she wouldn't move any of her kings what she'd do when she'd get a king she wouldn't move it she'd just leave it in the back row she'd get them all lined up in the back row and she'd never use any of them she just liked the way they look back there when they're in the back row now that would be annoying to play someone in checkers who did that, right? Because if they never move their kings from the back row, they're never going to win, but they're never going to lose either. They're playing defense, right? Now, this kind of helps explain why it freaked Holden out so much. Freaked Holden out so much that uh, Stradler was going out on a date with her, right? And we'll see a little scene from a double date that Holden went on with Stradletter where he essentially date raped the girl in the back, back seat, right, of the car. Um, and so for Holden, or Stradletter, who very much plays offense, and Jane, who plays defense, this really freaks Holden out, right? He talks a little more about Jane, and he knows Jane pretty well. Um, <clears throat> and it said, you know, I talked about the, this, this, uh, this guy who lived with her mother, who, stepfather, who was an alcoholic, and, and the, apparently some weird things going on in this house. We never really get the full story on what it is, but it doesn't seem to be good. Um, said uh, she had a lousy childhood. I'm not kidding. That didn't interest Stradletter, though. Only the very sexy stuff interested in him. What we're starting to learn from this is not only was this an important relationship to Holden, but they talked about a lot of stuff, right? And Holden needs to learn to talk. Um, and that's one of his issues and one of the things you could be writing your paper about. Okay, now, um, Holden then decides to go to a movie with some of his friends as we start chapter five. And we see some more evidence of Holden acting like a hypocrite. And if we take a look here, and this is on page 36 in the white book and page 20 in the PDF. And I talked about um, Mal Broussard, that was on the wrestling team, decided that we'd take a bus to Agartown and have a, uh, have a hamburger and maybe see a lousy movie. Neither of us felt like sitting around on our ass all night. I asked Mal if he minded if Ackley came with us. The reason I asked was because Ackley never did anything on Saturday night except stay in his room and squeeze his pimples or anything. Now, two things. One, he says he hates Ackley, and he asks Ackley to go to a movie. And he also says he hates the movies, and they're going to the movie, right? Now, if you notice, the only people left in the dorm on Saturday night are Ackley and Holden, and then this Mal guy who doesn't really show up much, right? And as much as Holden talks about Ackley being kind of uh, gross and not having good personal hygiene and not having any friends, they're the only two that are alone in this dorm on Saturday night, right? Which means they are the only ones who don't have anything left to do, right? So, um, then he comes back after the movie, and this is on page 21 on the PDF, and then page 38 in the white book. So he starts to write about uh, the descriptive paper for Stradletter, right? Now, as he's doing this, this is a symbol, the baseball mitt from, from Allie, right? And I think that the, you can use this, this is a symbol to describe Holden showing how much he needs to talk and communicate and how much he needs to talk and communicate about this issue, right? Now, the fact that he wrote about this baseball mitt tells us some information about who Allie is, right? I, I think most of you as juniors, right, would not write poems on your baseball or softball mitt because one, people on the team might make fun of you, two, you wouldn't be paying attention. But the fact that Allie, who was a young kid, did this 
One, it shows he's creative and smart, right? It's not like, you know, it, it, poetry's not easy, and for little kids to be reading it, that says something about them. Uh, and he's also creative and seems to not care what people think, right? That's one of the reasons I think uh, older people might not do that is because they're worried about people making fun of them, right? Now, one of the things that Holden likes about kids and older adults, uh, with, like with Mr. Spencer we saw, is that they don't care, right? They do what they want to do because they want to do it. And that's the type of person Holden would like to be, and from Holden's view, that is being not phony, right? Now, uh, in this bit about Allie and the whole thing with uh, the baseball mitt, which is why this serves as a good symbol to describe Holden and his needs, he talks about, and we get some more information here at the bottom of this page, page 39 in the book, and we're still on page 21 in the PDF. He talks about how much he needs, and this would fit in the communication essay really well, how much he needs to talk, right? I was only 13 when Allie died, and they were going to have me psychoanalyzed and all because I broke all the windows in the garage. So having me psychoanalyzed would be sending him to therapy, and this is really what he needs to do, right? If his parents had sent him to therapy, then he's talking to a professional who his job is to listen and give advice, right? And maybe that helps him. Um, I broke all the windows in the garage. I don't blame them. I really don't. I slept in the garage the night he died, and I broke all the windows with my fist just for the hell of it. I even tried to break the windows of the station wagon we had that summer, but my hand was already broken and everything by that time, and I couldn't do it. It was a very stupid thing to do, I'll admit, but I didn't hardly know I was doing it, and you didn't know Allie, right? So this is one of those scenes to show how much the, his younger brother's death impacted him, right? The fact that he would go out and, and break all the windows in the garage shows what a big deal this was and how difficult this was for him. Right. And if you were writing the paper about how he needs to learn to communicate, this would be a thing you could put in the beginning. His parents almost had him psychoanalyzed, sent him to therapy, but he didn't. Now, when whole, uh, when Stradletter gets back from his date, um, when Stradletter gets back from his date, Holden wants to know what happened to him, happened to him on the date with Jane. And he's really worried about this. And Stradletter won't tell him. Right now. Um, mm, 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 mm. On page 23, it talks about, uh, you know, he kind of gives Holden a hard time and says it's a professional secret what happened. And, you know, he got to take the coach's car out and go on this date. And now Holden attacks him, right? As much as Holden talks about being a wimp throughout the book and too scared to confront people, he nearly tried to kill Stradletter, right? So Stradletter was brushing his teeth. And you can imagine if someone had a toothbrush in their mouth and then someone punched the toothbrush in their mouth, that goes out the back of their throat, right? And I don't know whether that kills them, but it would certainly mess him up but he missed right and i don't know if you've ever heard the expression if you're going to kill the king you better kill the king i think i'm paraphrasing it a little bit but what i mean by that is if you don't kill the king or if you take a swing at someone who's a lot bigger than you and you don't connect you're going to get beaten down which is what happens to him right so holden stradletter beats him up and then we get the red hunting hat coming up again and at this point uh um Hang on, I'm going to pause for one sec. Okay, right here, on, we're on page 25, we get the red hunting hat coming up again. And this is on page 45 in the text. Now, just to remind you, in your papers, do not write that the red hunting hat is a security blanket or provide some comfort, right? Because if it was a security blanket or provided him comfort because he's so unhappy, he would wear it all the time, right? It would be like his little snuggly teddy bear. But he takes it off frequently because he's embarrassed and doesn't want people to judge him, right? He does put it on. When he puts it on, it's a sign and demonstration of his maturity and showing people he doesn't care, right? So what he does after he's, I mean, he was humiliated. You know, this guy goes out on a date with this girl he really likes, and then he comes back, and then the guy beats the crap out of him, right? So he's feeling pretty low. Um, uh, finally, I found it. It was under the bed. I put it on and turned the old peak around to the back the way I liked it, and then I went over and took a look at my stupid face in the mirror, right? So anytime he puts the hat on, it's a demonstration of his maturity. It's not causing his maturity. Lastly, chapter seven, he comes back and we get the little story about um, the date rape scenario, right? And right here, and this is on page 27, he gets this story about how he was on a double date with Stradletter and he was in, Stradletter was in the back seat and he kind of kept talking to this girl, uh, Holden describes him as, as snowing, right? So he just kind of keeps talking to her and keeps talking to her. And she keeps saying, no, please don't, no, please don't, no, please don't. And then all of a sudden there's silence in the backseat, right? So this is what Holden is very fearful about. Lastly, at the very end of chapter seven, we get a little bit about uh, Holden got a gift from his mom. And 
mom got him skates and it said, I wanted racing skates, but she bought hockey and it made me sad anyway. Almost every time somebody gives me a present, it ends up making me sad. So you can think about Holden's mom buying her son this gift that he's he she thinks he's really excited about. He's not. And now he's got to come back and tell his mom he's getting kicked out of school. Mom who's already having a hard time with death, a younger brother. That's it. Thank you.